Welcome back to Leeds Lately. We're going to be talking about a couple of players today, Roland Shalloy and as well Elias Chair, who's been linked. But before we get into that, make sure you hit that big red button down below. Now, the reason I mention Elias Chair as well is because he has been linked with a move to Leeds United, but it's through Football Insider, who, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinions as well, I don't believe to be a credible source. So when I see something a little bit more concrete on that, I will make a proper video on it as well. And of course, I will acknowledge um, his past tran transgressions in terms of what he was temporarily sent to prison for as well. Um, but before that, let's go and talk about uh, Roland Shalloy, who supposedly is a little bit more of a solid link. Freiburg need to sell a player um, and... Shalloy is the one that Leeds are wanting, really. So let's have a little bit of a look at his profile um, and kind of talk about the kind of player he is and then maybe a little bit of statistics as well. But Shalloy is 27 years old. He's a Hungarian footballer, plays for the Hungary national team. We've seen him at the Euros, seen him at um, many international competitions. Um, he plays on the right wing primarily and he can play on the left wing as well, which is also good for, for the kind of versatility. And he can play as a second striker as well. So you can, if you're really wanting to go for it in a game, really wanting to try and go for that um, for that goal at the end, you could actually tuck him inside and bring another winger on and, and things like that. So you've got options with him. He's not necessarily a number 10, like a few people had kind of hinted at. I mean, he, he might have that kind of position in the locker, but I think his passing wouldn't really allow for it too much. But... Having said that, I think he would actually be a good signing if we could get him. Look, transfer marked rates him around 15 million euros, which is probably above what our kind of price range is for him, because that would be about another 12 million pounds, 10 million pounds. So perhaps that might be why they're exploring options like perhaps chair, but we don't know that. And I would imagine that one's not true. And the reason for that is the 49ers move so silently at times that you don't know who they're going for. And if Football Insider are the ones to break it or somebody like that, who we definitely feel don't have an in-the-know um, for Leeds United. I just feel like it's fabrication because of the previous links before. So, look, Elias Chair might still be on the list, so that might be why they can say, okay, well, it's a credible article because um, Elias Chair's still on the list from way back when, six months ago when we were looking at him in January. So, leave that to one side. Roland Shalloy then. So, like I said, he can play on the right wing, he can play on the left wing. He's a little bit like Dan James, but with a few more tricks up his sleeve. Now, the reason I say that is he, he does like to stay quite wide. He does like to take players on, though, which is a little bit different from Dan James. He likes to stay wide, take players on, go down the line and cross the ball into the box. And his crossing is really, really decent as well. And I've seen him get a few assists and put the ball into really good areas from his crossing, which Dan James is also really improving himself at at the moment. But Roland Shalloy is somebody who's a little bit more likely to to take on a player, to, to go past someone and decent shot on him. Um, let's have a look at what kind of uh, amount of goals he scored last season. This season, of course, there's all, it's only just started, so they've only just scored one. Um, sorry, played one game. He hasn't scored a goal yet. Um, we'll talk about similar plays he's being compared to, actually, at the moment. So similar players, Iñaki Williams at Athletic Club. If you know about him, you know he's very fast, very kind of skillful and tricky and tries to get through. You're also getting comparisons to players who we talked about the other day when we were comparing um, the last player we looked at, who was one second. Who was the last player we looked at? Um, I think it was Ramazani. Yeah, Ramazani, when we were looking at him, he was getting compared to these same players in terms of Anthony Alanga, Jared Bowen, Karim Adeyemi. But in here, you've also got Joao Pedro, who plays for Brighton, who obviously scored against Manchester United the other day. Ruben Vargas for Augsburg, who was the one who plays for Switzerland in the Euros. Um, some decent some decent comparisons there for um, Roland Shalloy. Um, last season, he played 27 games, scored three and assisted two. But of course, that is in the Bundesliga in the top division. His XG was 7.9 and he only scored three goals. So he vastly underperformed what his expected goals should have been, really. He's never been one for prolifically scoring goals. The most goals he's ever scored was for Freiburg in 2020-2021 season, where he scored eight goals and got three assists. So... That's the only time where he's outperformed his XG as well. So it's interesting to to kind of see that he's not necessarily a big goal scorer. He's not necessarily a big assister as well. He's a decent player. 
and a lot of people have been wanting to sign him, but I'm not 100% that he is kind of the best player in the world. When we compare him to forwards, his kind of charts and things look a lot better than when we compare him to midfielders. Um because his shot creating actions, he's up in the 83rd percentile, so 3.25 um, shot creating actions per 90. So he's creating chances. Again, this is how we always measure it. If you don't know by now what shot creating actions is, two offensive actions leading directly to a shot, such as passes, take ons, and drawing fouls. Um, if that's not enough, Google it because I, I've, I've read it out a hundred times on this channel. Um, but yeah, he's. We're looking at against forwards because I do believe that he's more of a right winger than a midfielder, um, and those are kind of the way that he the way that he um, makes his impact on the game. Um, assists forty seventh percentile, so not point one one assists. So essentially, it's an assist every ten game, every ten game, every ten games. It's not fantastic. It's really not that great. But when he's creating that many shots. You'd expect more people to take the chances. He's creating three shots per 90 and only one of those is being scored every 10 games. So sometimes that can be a little bit of um, is it a, is it actual assist can be a little bit of a red herring because it looks like he's, his assists are really, really low. But when you look and he's creating shots for people three over three times per 90 minutes and they're not scoring any, they're scoring one of those shots per 10 games. So they're scoring one in every 30 shots that he's giving them. Um, you can see why his actual assists are quite low. Um, he's uh, he's actually pretty good for his kind of um, his passing as well. Progressive passes, seventieth percentile. So on his progressive passes, two point three four per ninety puts him in the seventieth percentile against forwards in the last three hundred and sixty five days. So that's top five leagues as well. So that's compared to Premier League, Bundesliga, Serie A, La Liga Santander. I don't know why I read out the sponsor for that one. Um, but yeah, he's basically getting the ball forward quite a lot, way above average on that one. Progressive carries as well, like I said, he likes to take people on. Progressive take-ons, sorry, successful take-ons as well. Uh, in the 59th percentile, you'll be able to see all this on the screen anyway. And he takes a lot of touches as well in the 84th percentile. He likes to get on the ball. He likes to take people on. Um as well, defensive uh, responsibilities as well. He gets back, and that is something that Leeds would need him to do, especially when you're playing with high fullbacks. You need your wingers to get back and help out, which we often see people like Dan James and Willie Nonto do. But Roland Choloy has definitely got that in the locker with his clearances, blocks, tackles and interceptions, um, all of those things. They are quite high up there. Um, progressive passes received is the last one we're going to look at before we go back to a little bit of the eye test as well um 77th percentile he receives nearly seven passes per 90 um in the final third so he's getting up there he's receiving the ball and then trying to put it into the box as well so pretty decent on the statistics side of things um i think he would fit into the lead side quite well um one thing i want to mention as well is his first touch is, is really really good um He's one of those players who can take a first touch that already takes somebody out of the game or two players coming towards him and he'll just turn and go between both of them and really uh, kind of set himself up to, to set the counter-attack. And again, going back to the game against West Brom where the ball came into Dan James and he did that little flick to Aronson and then once Aronson had gone, the whole Sheffield Wednesday defence was... Did I say West Brom then? I meant Sheffield Wednesday. The whole Sheffield Wednesday defence was in disarray then and that's when we scored our first goal. Somebody like Roland Chaloy is capable of doing that sort of thing himself. He's able to turn and then you've taken two players out of the game and he can drive forward with it because, like I say, he's good at carrying the ball. He's good at taking people on and driving forward with the ball. So, again, he'd be very decent. The... Not the issue, but the kind of only the kind of sticking point is: Do we need another right winger? Um, we've got Dan James, we've got um, Aronson who can play out there as well. But Shalloy would be someone who probably expects to start. How much better is he than Dan James, and is it worth spending that much money for somebody who might not necessarily be a massive amount better than Dan James? Who, let's not forget, got a load of goals and assists last season and contributed really, really well to the system. So. It'd be interesting to see where Leeds go on this one because I don't know whether they're thinking of him as a as a number ten, as an inside forward who can come in and come inside and go into the half space, or whether they're thinking of him as kind of an out and out winger. Um, but 
I mean, I wouldn't be completely averse to it. I think he'd be a good player. I think he'd carry the ball well for us. He'd drive us up the pitch a lot of the time. I'm just not sh quite sure where he fits in. And I know that he fits in on the left and the right-hand side, but we have just signed Laji Ramazani who can do that. We've got... Um, what's his face as well? Um, Wilfred Nonto. We've got Dan James. There are certainly options that we have. Should we be spending that money on a number 10? And of course, Elias Chair is somebody who has been linked to that number 10 role. I still would prefer Ilan Cabal um, in that number 10 role as well, but I'm not sure that we actually are going to go for him now, which is a bit disappointing because his stats are off the chart and the way he plays would be so good for us. Um, but yeah, that's Roland Shalloy. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And of course, in the coming days, we'll see more about who, what other players are linked and what other players might be coming into Leeds. Thanks for watching Leeds lately. Like I said, let me know what you think. Make sure you uh, stay subscribed to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching Leeds lately. I'll see you in the next one.